On July 2nd, 2021, Delilah Yang will return home from a sleepover to find a freshly dug hole in her backyard. When she asked her mother about this hole, she would be told that it was dug for renovation purposes. Delilah's mother would then go on to tell her that her stepfather, Ku Yang, had also walked out on their family and that she had no idea where he's gone and if he's ever coming back. However, Delilah began to suspect that her mother wasn't telling her the truth, and she would soon uncover the disturbing truth behind her stepfather's disappearance in the hole in their backyard. Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jen and I talk about true crime cases. This is a very exciting video for me today because I have finally upgraded my microphone. I have received some feedback in the comments that audio is something that can be improved in my videos and I've taken your feedback and I have upgraded my microphone and I really hope that this does give all of you guys a better audio experience. Before we jump into today's case, I just want to remind you guys that if you haven't and you like my content, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button as well as hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And of course, it's super, super appreciated and it really does motivate me to get these videos out for you guys. Moving on from that, we're going to be jumping right into today's case. On July 22nd, 2021, an unknown caller would make a call to 911 requesting that they do a welfare check on Ku Yang at his residence in St. Paul, Minnesota. The unknown caller would tell 911 that colleagues and friends of Ku had not seen him for several weeks now, and because this was so unlike him, they were beginning to worry and just wanted somebody to go to the residence just to make sure that he's there, he's okay, and that nothing's happened to him. Now, Ku was actually married to a woman named Karina C. Her, and Karina and Ku were in the process of getting a divorce. Despite the fact that they were in the process of getting a divorce, they did agree with each other that they would continue to live in the same house and to work together to remodel the home that they were living in so that they could put it up in the market, sell it, and then after that, go their separate ways. And here's what's strange. After the unknown caller had made a call to 911 telling them about Ku's disappearance or requesting the welfare check, Karina would also make a call to 911 on the very same day, so July 22nd, 2021, and she would also tell the 911 dispatchers that she had not seen her ex-husband since June 30th and that she wasn't sure where he's gone. The authorities would head over to Ku and Karina's residence at 1100 Kennard Street to complete the welfare check. And when they arrived at the residence, they would be greeted by Karina, who would speak to the officers and tell them that, yeah, she hasn't seen Ku since the 30th of June, and she doesn't exactly know where he's gone, but maybe he's gone to see his sister in Oklahoma, because he did mention this to her before, that he has family there and he maybe wanted to go visit his sister. However, I have read in some articles that Ku actually left because Karina was threatening to get a protection order in place by a court because she was terrified of Ku. But I just want to say that that is unconfirmed, but that is something that I did read in one or two articles online. Karina would then also tell the officers that she's tried to reach Ku a number of times now throughout the last few weeks, but she's never been able to get a hold of him. And every time she tried to call him, it would just go straight to voicemail. And because she wasn't able to get a hold of him, this did concern her. And that's why she decided to call the police and to file a missing persons report. Now, this is when things get even stranger. After the officers had spoken with Karina and they left the residence, that very same day, later in the evening at 9.30 p.m., Karina's daughter, Delilah Yang, would also make a call to 911. The then 17-year-old Delilah Yang would tell the officers that she and her siblings had not seen Ku for several weeks now. She would also tell the officers that after they had left the residence, Delilah's younger sister would send her a text message reading, Mommy is suspicious. Delilah's younger sister would also tell her that Karina had taken her 
for a long drive to a wooded area in Taylor's Falls, and she had with her a bag containing a long object. Now, when Delilah asked her sister if she could remember what was in the bag, her sister said she didn't really get a good look, but when they got to this wooded area, Karina would step out of the car with that bag and that object, and she would go into the woods for a few minutes, and when she came back out, she no longer had the bag with her. Karina and Delilah's younger sister would then make the long drive home without making any stops and without any explanation as to what all that was about. Delilah would also state that on June 30th, 2021, she was spending time at a friend's house when she received a strange phone call from her mother. Karina would ask Delilah to spend the night at her friend's house. And this was super weird for Delilah because her mother never ever allowed her children to do sleepovers at other people's houses. So Delilah was surprised by the request, but she said, yep, okay, no worries. I'll spend time here tonight and I'll see you tomorrow. However, the next day, Karina would call Delilah again and she would ask Delilah to spend one more night at her friend's house. Now, Delilah does state that at the end of that second phone call that Karina made, she was surprised to hear her mother say, I love you to her. For most people, a parent saying I love you to a child shouldn't be anything out of the ordinary. It should be something very normal. However, for Karina, this was not normal. Karina wasn't very affectionate with her children. She rarely said I love you to her children. And in fact, Delilah states that there's only been three times in her entire life where she's heard her mother say I love you to her. And that was one of them. So on July 2nd, when Delilah returns home from her sleepover, she does find that Koo is now gone from the house and that there is a freshly dug hole in their backyard. And on top of the hole, there was a tarp covering it. So Delilah couldn't see what was inside the hole. And she also didn't look underneath it because, well, she didn't think at that time that there would be anything bad in there. When Delilah asked Karina about this hole in their backyard, Karina would explain to her that in order to boost the value of the house for the sale, she was going to build a shed over the hole. She also recounts that the camera that was installed in the garage of their home had been removed when Delilah returned home. Again, she did find all of this kind of strange, but not strange enough to think that anything horrible could have happened. And within a few days of Delilah being back, Karina would quickly begin to put down bricks and cement and would begin to erect the shed in their backyard over the hole that she had dug. As more time went by and Ku still did not return home, Delilah would become increasingly worried about him. They both had a very close relationship with one another and it just wasn't like Ku to just up and leave without saying a word to her. There have been times in the past where Karina and Ku would get into an argument and Ku would have to leave the house for a few days, but he would never be gone for more than one or two days. So for him to have been gone for this many days now, it was definitely a red flag to Delilah because, again, it just wasn't like her stepfather to do something like this. Ku owned and drove a red pickup truck, and whenever he left the house, he would always take this truck with him. But when Delilah returned home from her sleepover on July 2nd, she did note that the truck was still in their driveway. Karina and Ku owned a RV and a yellow BMW, but apparently after Ku's disappearance from the home, Delilah remembers that her mother had apparently asked one of her brothers to come to their home and to move the vehicles to Delilah's grandmother's garage in Wisconsin. And by July 9th, Ku's red truck in their driveway would also disappear and had apparently been moved by Karina. At that point, Delilah wasn't sure if the red truck had been moved up to her grandmother's as well or if it had been disposed of elsewhere. Delilah still wasn't able to get in touch with Ku. She had tried to call him numerous times, but her phone calls would go to voicemail and when she would send him text messages, the messages would get delivered, but he would never respond. So this really did add to her worry about something being off because again, this just wasn't something that Ku would ever do to her or to his other children. 
To make matters worse, every time Delilah tried to talk to her mother about what happened to Ku, you know, where he's gone, why he left, what happened, her mother would just go into a rage. She would start crying and yelling at Delilah. And because of this, Delilah stopped asking her mother about what happened to her stepfather. Instead, Delilah would decide that she would just try to figure things out on her own and she would try to find her own answers. So on July 9th, 2021, the very same day that Ku's red truck would go missing from their driveway, Delilah would sneak into Ku's and Karina's bedroom and she would begin to look for clues about his whereabouts. Lila would find that Ku's clothes were all missing from that bedroom, but he did not take with him his toolbox. And this was a major red flag for Delilah because Ku never went anywhere without that toolbox. He would have never left the house for days without that toolbox. And again, Ku really loved his children. He would never leave his children without saying a word, without saying goodbye, without letting them know what was going on. Delilah would also spot that there was a dent in the bedsheets of her parents' mattress. So she decides to pull back the bedsheets. And when she does, she finds that there's a large hole in the mattress. It was as if this hole had been cut into the mattress to remove something. And during that conversation that Delilah had with the officers on the phone, the very first one on July 22nd, she would also tell the officers that her mother had a valid permit to carry firearms and that she would regularly go to the shooting range. So she did express that maybe that hole had been made by maybe a bullet. The conversation that Delilah had with the officers on July 22nd was a two hour long conversation on the phone. And when that conversation was over, Delilah even expressed that she wasn't sure if the officers believed anything she said. But luckily they did, and they would look into this case. On July 25th, the authorities would go around the block around Karina's residence, and they would begin to speak to Karina's neighbors. One of the neighbors did tell the authorities that they had not seen Ku in the residence since the very beginning of July, so July 1st. That neighbor would also tell the authorities that around July 5th, for about a week after that, there would be this horrible smell coming from Ku's and Karina's residence, specifically from their backyard. Another neighbor would tell the authorities that weeks prior to Ku's disappearance, Karina had visited that neighbor's parents to ask them about their previous home sale. Karina had told the neighbor's parents that she and Ku had plans to renovate their home and then to sell it for $300,000 in August of 2021. But then weeks later, Karina would abruptly change her mind and would tell the neighbors that she was going to sell the house as is and then she's going to be putting the house on the market by July 23rd. Around this same time period, the authorities would find Ku's missing red truck parked four blocks down from his residence. Neighbors in that area told the authorities that some unknown driver had driven the car there, parked it there, and had left it there for weeks. And on July 28th, the authorities would also find Ku's missing RV and yellow BMW parked in a storage facility in White Bear Lake. And when looking around in the storage space, the authorities would also find that there were tubs of Ku's clothing stored in there. On July 29th, the authorities would visit Karina at her home again, and this time, they would arrest her. I'll also go into more details about this arrest a little further down in this video because there's so much more information that needs to be shared before we discuss the actual arrest. So on July 29th, on the day of Karina's arrest, the officers would also bring with them a search warrant for the home and then a cadaver dog. When the cadaver dog was searching the property, specifically in the backyard, the dog would show interest immediately in the shed's handle and the shed's door. The dog's handler did state that this interest the dog was showing did indicate decomposition or 
blood present within the area. And when searching inside the home, the authorities would also find blood present in various parts of the home. In one of the bedrooms, they would find blood splatter on the walls and the authorities would also note that the walls had been recently painted over as if somebody was trying to hide the splatter of blood. There was also blood on the window covering in that very same bedroom as well as blood in the home's laundry room. In the garage, the authorities would also find a carpet cleaning machine and within the machine there was blood. So this indicates that Karina had used the carpet cleaning machine to clean blood off of the carpets within their home. So here they are now with a missing man and tons of blood splatter all around the house and a cadaver dog indicating that there could be a human body present on the premises. They immediately know that whatever's happened to Ku couldn't have been good. Now, I wish I had been able to find the interrogation video for Karina online, but I wasn't able to, which is very unfortunate. I really would have loved to watch the interrogation video and to also share that with you guys, but I didn't find it. However, I did find some documents that went over the case as well as a little bit of what Karina had told the officers. This is a legal document. I will share or link the document in my description, but I will also recap it for you guys here. So to recap what was discussed during the interrogation, the investigators would ask Karina again, what happened to your ex-husband? Like, where did he go? What happened to him? Karina would once again tell the authorities that she had not seen Ku since June 30th. She would also tell them that she and Ku were divorced, but that they had agreed to remodel their home together and then sell that home before going their separate ways. And again, she tells the investigators that she has no idea where he's gone or why he's left, but maybe he had done something to somebody or is running away from someone or something or had done something bad and that's why he's left but she's not sure why he really left and where he's gone but then she does mention that maybe he's in oklahoma visiting his sister he likes to go there sometimes and he likes to go up there to smoke mj the investigators would then also take this opportunity to ask karina about the foul smell that neighbors had been reporting coming from karina's backyard to which karina would tell them oh you know she had a coop of pigeons so the smell was coming from pigeon poop. And then after that, they do go back to speaking about Ku and about the very last night that she had seen Ku, which was June 30th. And this is when things like little small details in her story begins to slip. She would first tell the authorities that Ku on the night of June 30th had decided that he was going to sleep in the kids' room. But then later, she changes that story to him sleeping in the bedroom next to their bathroom. But then a little bit further on in the story, she tells them that, oh no, he was actually sleeping in the basement. Karina would then also tell the authorities that she herself decided to go out and sleep in the RV. But because she couldn't get the AC working in the RV, she decided to come back into the house and to sleep in Delilah's bedroom. She then tells the officers that she's really not sure which bedroom Ku was sleeping in, whether it was the Northwest bedroom or another bedroom, because she was in and out of the house that night. Karina would then tell the investigators that she wasn't really sure when Ku left because when she woke up on July 1st, he was gone already and she just assumed that maybe he had called an Uber or asked a friend for a ride because all of his vehicles were still at the house. She also tells them that maybe he was the one to have moved all of his clothes to the storage facility because when she woke up, the clothes were gone so she definitely didn't move them. He probably did it himself. She then says that she did try to call him numerous times, but that the calls all went to voicemail and she had just assumed the coup had blocked her number. The investigator would then ask Karina if she was concerned about whether or not Ku was going to return. And Karina said no, and that it wasn't very unusual for Ku to leave 
the house without his red truck. You know, he's left before and he's left his truck at home before. So this is very typical. That's what she tells them. But again, this is a very different story from what Delilah was saying. Karina then follows up with the statement that she herself had been the one to move Ku's red truck four blocks down the road because she was trying to make space in her driveway. Now, here's what's really strange. During the interrogation, one of the investigators does tell Karina that they don't believe that Ku had left the house or the property alive. Karina apparently never refuted the statement. And when the officers asked Karina if she and Ku had gotten into some sort of argument on the night that he left, she denied it. She denied that they were in an argument, that she denied that they had a fight. She just denied that there was any issue. But then if there was no issue, why did he just up and leave? That's really strange. And why are you unable to give a solid reason as to why he's left? He's your ex husband sure but you both made an agreement to live together to remodel your home together and you both have children together why did he just up and leave without any clear reason she also then admits that yes she did in fact drive to taylor's falls but she had only driven there to go and discard some trash now this is a red flag because taylor's falls is about an hour long drive from their residence. Why are you driving an hour away to go and throw away trash? When the investigators asked her what was this trash, she told them it was just a bunch of food that she had in her car. Now at some point during the interrogation, the investigators do tell Karina that their cadaver dog has sensed a dead body underneath the shed that she's built. And they would ask her, not once, or twice, but numerous times actually, whether or not she buried Ku in the backyard. They asked her, did you do something to him? Is he buried there? They gave her multiple opportunities to just confess. But instead of directly answering the question, Karina would try to divert their attention elsewhere. She would tell them, and I quote, there's a hole in the basement. It's plugged up. There be a dead body down there. The bathroom's been remodeled. And at this point, no amount of excuses or diversions were going to help her out of this hole that she's dug for herself. The authorities honestly just didn't believe a single word that she was saying to them at this point. Everything she was telling them just didn't really add up. And they knew that she was responsible for Ku's disappearance and, well, now murder. Now, on July 31st, 2021, the authorities would excavate the area around the shed and they would uncover the decomposing body of Ku Yang. Karina's daughters, Delilah and Mylin, would actually go on to a TV show called Evil Lives Here and speak about what happened in their family and all the horrific events that took place on this show. And during their episode, they would share some really dark and disturbing things about what their mother had put their entire family through. I have included a link of the episode that I found on YouTube, but just to warn you guys, it's not good quality whatsoever. The audio is off, the video itself is off, but it's all I could find at this moment because the other link that I had that is much better quality actually was removed earlier in the week, so I no longer have access to that link. And I also don't have access to the platform that the show runs on. But if you do, I recommend watching it because it was a very good episode. However, for those of you who don't want to go watch the full episode, don't worry. I've got you covered. I have watched video that I found on YouTube and I'm here to recap it for you guys. Mylan and Delilah in the video, you will notice this. Well, if you don't watch it, then I guess you won't notice it. But they both don't consistently call Karina mom. They switch off between mom and Karina because, as Mylan uh, will say in the video, she really has found it very hard to come to terms with what her mother has done and can't bear to call her mom consistently because she feels like Karina doesn't deserve to be called mom. Not after everything she's 
put her children and her partners through. In the show, Mylin, who is Karina's eldest daughter, she would begin by sharing the story of how Karina had her at the age of 16. Mylin was Karina's first child, so she is Karina's eldest child, and she states in the documentary that she and her mother had a very difficult relationship. Karina would tell her eldest daughter, Mylin, that she regrets having Mylin because if she hadn't had Mylin or had been pregnant with Mylin at the age that she was, her life would be so different. And she often made it very clear that she resented her daughter for this. And as you can imagine, this had a huge impact on Mylin's mental health and of course her self-confidence. Karina would go on to have three more children with Mylin's biological father. I just also want to clarify here that my Lin and Delilah, their biological father is not Ku Yang. Ku Yang is their stepfather. So Karina had been married before Ku and she had four children with her previous partner and then would continue to have two more children with Ku. Delilah was the youngest daughter from Karina's first marriage and she and My Lin would do this documentary together. However, the other children would not be featured in the episode. My Lin and Delilah would state that their mother had a history of physical and mental abuse with all of her children. Delilah would often be berated and yelled at by her mother anytime she did anything that her mother was lightly displeased with. There are even periods of her child childhood that she's repressed and has actually forgotten because they were so traumatic for Delilah. As for Mylin, she also was put through a lot of horrible things by Karina. Back when Karina was still married to Mylin's biological father, Karina had supposedly taken a hot scalding spoon and had pressed it into Mylin's hands. Mylin had apparently stood up on a stool in their kitchen and had accidentally bumped into Karina, which quickly angered her and caused her to take this horrific action. And when the girl's biological father came home from work and saw Mylin crying, he would go up to her and say, hey, like what's going on? What happened? She would show him the burn mark on her hands and he would immediately freak out and call the police. However, no charges were officially pressed because Mylin's father decided that he didn't want to go through with it and ended up dropping those charges. Mylin would state that their biological father really wanted to keep the peace in the household and didn't want to put their family through the hassle of lawyers and being in family court and just really wanted things to work out in the marriage and within their little family. So that's why he dropped those charges and would continue to put up with so many things that Karina would put him and the children through. Now in another incident, this one's very disturbing as well. My Lynn recalls one day when her father returned home from work and he noticed that there was this really strange smell in their house. My Lynn's father had apparently found Karina standing in the middle of their home in their living room holding a bottle of gasoline. And this was a bottle of gasoline that she was going around the house with, pouring out into different rooms. And he begins to freak out because Karina starts screaming at him and telling him that she's gonna burn down this entire house. And what's really terrifying is that their children were present in the house. They were all witnessing this. This, while everything was going on, they were witnessing their mother trying to burn down their home with them in it. So Mylan's dad decides to call one of their relatives and their relative ends up rushing over to their home and they manage to get Karina to settle down, sit down, and to cool off. Apparently the couple had been having marital problems but what really shocked the whole family was that instead of just leaving, Karina had resorted to trying to burn down her home with her children in it. This understandably terrified the children and their father. And soon after that, Mylin's biological father and Karina would decide that they just couldn't continue on with their relationship, so it was time to go their separate ways. The two would end up divorcing and My Lin's father would confess that he was grateful that he was able to leave that marriage when he did because he was convinced that if he had remained in the marriage, 
he wouldn't be alive right now. So after the divorce, Karina would end up with custody of the children and she would take them all to Wisconsin where she would move on and meet Ku Yang and they would be in a relationship and then end up getting married. Karina and Ku would go on to have two children together and Mylin and Delilah stated that Ku was an amazing stepfather to them and to their siblings and it really did seem like they had a very nice blended family. Mylin would state in the show that initially things seemed to be working out really well in their family. It seemed like Karina and Ku were in a really good place. They were in their honeymoon phase or stage of their marriage. So everything was working really well. However, this would turn out to not be the case for too long. As I mentioned, Ku was an amazing stepfather to his stepchildren. He really treated them like they were his own children. And instead of being happy about this, Karina got really upset about it. She was very upset about it. There was this one time when Ku was fixing up an old car for Delilah and when Karina saw this, she went into a fit of rage, went out into their garden, found a few bricks, and started smashing bricks through the windows of the car. Karina had apparently done this because she was trying to get Ku's attention. She wasn't happy about the fact that Ku was giving some of his attention to her own children and yeah it's honestly just craziness and while ku was aware of all of karina's issues he really honestly loved her very deeply and wanted this marriage to work he didn't want to leave his stepchildren and he didn't want to separate his biological children from their mother so he put up with a lot of Karina's madness. Later in their marriage, Karina would end up installing cameras around their house, and at one point, she even installed cameras in their kitchen. Delilah would discover that these cameras were installed so that Karina could keep an eye on Ku when she wasn't at home. She was once in a car with her mother when they were out and about doing errands, and her mother would pull out her phone and pull up the application and would just monitor Ku, like, at home doing his thing. She would apparently do this numerous times. It was like a regular thing actually for her to do. And at one point, Delilah asked her mother, like, why are you watching him? Like, what's going on? She apparently told Delilah that you never know what he's doing. He could be cheating on me. She was convinced that her partner, Ku, was cheating on her or was going to cheat on her and that's why she needed to monitor him. Mylan would also share her own stories about Karina, stating that there were times where Ku would be arriving home late from work or, you know, he was out with friends or family and he would just be home late and Karina would lose her mind. She would tell Mylan to get into the car and they would end up driving for hours around the city trying to find him. Karina was incredibly paranoid and seemed to always need to know where Ku was at all times and what he was doing at all times. And despite all of the fighting and yelling and abuse that Karina would throw onto Ku, Mylan and Delilah stated that he was always very kind to their mother and loved her very deeply. Now, as their marriage went on, things just seemed to get worse and Karina seemed to continue to get more psychotic. At one point, Karina started telling her daughters that she was angry with their stepfather and that she was going to murder them. She would even say those things to Ku directly. And while it did scare Ku and the children, they didn't really believe that she was capable of hurting them or hurting Ku. However, as their marriage went on and the threats kept happening, Ku did eventually become pretty weary and started to get a little bit suspicious. At one point, Ku told Delilah and Mylin that he was getting very worried about all of the threats that he was receiving from their mother and that at night before going to bed, he would wait for Karina to fall asleep first before doing so himself because he had started to worry 
that Karina would do something to him. And in April 2011, Ku would go into Mylin's room and would shake her awake and tell her that her mother was trying to burn the house down. Now, Mylin waking up to this and hearing about this, which is think, oh my god, here we go again. So she and Ku run downstairs and find Karina standing at their stovetop throwing newspaper onto the stovetop. When Mylin and Ku would confront her and tell her to stop, Karina would end up pulling out a knife from their kitchen block and waving it around screaming at Mylin and telling her to go back to bed and to mind her own business. Eventually, Ku's like, okay, Mylin, yeah, maybe go back upstairs, go back to bed. It doesn't seem safe. Mylin agrees, and so she starts heading back up the stairs to her bedroom when she hears Ku scream, ow, that hurts. When she runs back to the kitchen to see what's happened, she finds a knife stuck to her stepfather's back. Karina threw a knife at Ku and it hit him in the back. Mylan would end up calling the police and they would arrive shortly and Karina would be taken away to jail, but just for one night. Charges were never pressed because Ku decided that he didn't want to press charges and that he wanted to go back to be with Karina. However, before Karina was released the next day, Ku would tell Mylan that she needed to call her biological father and to take her siblings to go live with him because it wasn't safe for them to live in the house anymore. Mylan would agree and she would call her father who would make the drive down to get her and to bring her and her siblings back to live with him. She would be in her father's custody for a year because they did get a protection order in place, which allowed Mylin's biological father to have custody of them, full custody, for one whole year. Unfortunately, the day that that protection order and that custody order was expired, Karina would go to Mylin's biological father's home and she would take back the children. However, she didn't take back all the children. She would only end up taking back three of the youngest children, leaving the three oldest children with their father. Delilah, being the youngest in that family, was taken to live with Karina. And Delilah was really disappointed about this because when she went back to live with her mother, the abuse continued and she started to notice that her mother just seemed to get worse. She was constantly angry and yelling at Ku and the rest of the children, and she had even told Delilah to never speak with her older siblings ever again, to just cut contact with them and not speak with her biological father or Mylin or her other siblings. Eventually, Ku and Karina's marriage would deteriorate because things just continued to get so bad. And this is when they would agree with each other that they would, you know, divorce, they would remodel the home, and then eventually they would sell the home and then go their separate ways. And then in the remaining part of the show or the episode, Delilah would go into details about Ku's disappearance and his tragic death and then the hole in their backyard, all of which I did discuss earlier on in this video. I also mentioned earlier in this video that whenever Delilah would ask Karina about Ku, like where he's gone or what's happened to him, her mother would go into a rage and just start yelling and crying and just going crazy essentially. Delilah did decide that she would start recording those conversations with her mother because she just sensed that something was really wrong and began to suspect that Ku had not just upped and left and that Karina may have very well done something to her stepfather. I do not care if he comes back and, and stop me from going. You stay with me, stop it. I love you. Oh, can I move on? Don't ever talk about the past. Don't ever talk about. He cares. Oh, he's still daddy. Dad, I move on. Don't ever break his name. I was just asking because sometimes, like, I don't give a. 
After Ku had been missing from their home for a few days, Delilah would reach out to her older sister Mylan, who again was living with their biological father, and she would tell Mylan about all of the things that was going on in the home, and then also tell Mylan that something was wrong, Ku was missing. And this is when the two sisters would agree that they would try their best to figure out what happened to Ku. And the concern that they had for Ku is actually what prompted Delilah to make that phone call to to 911 on July 22nd. After that phone call that she made to 911, she and the officers would actually go on to work very closely together to figure out what happened to Ku Yang. Delilah would communicate with the officers daily to share information with them whenever she spoke to her mother and she found out information or whenever something strange was happening in the home, she would tell the officers via text in her phone. And in her phone, she also changed the names of the officers to names of people that she knew in school so that if her mother ever saw any of these text messages, she wouldn't know that they were officers that she was communicating with. Now, here's a little surprise. On July 29th, on the day of Karina's arrest, Karina was getting ready to pack up the house and to flee with the children. I believe that the reason Karina had started to panic and wanted to flee is because she knew that the police were onto her. Police had actually tried to visit Karina and to question her twice before the 29th of July, but both times Karina would catch them coming from the camera surveillance that she put up in her home and she would tell the children to hide, settle down, and to not say anything until they left. She quite literally told her children to go and hide in their home and to ignore the police officers knocking at their door. Not once, but twice. So on July 29th, as I mentioned earlier, Karina is getting ready to flee her home with her children. This is when Delilah texts the officers that she's in communication with and she tells them, you need to hurry over to my house now because my mother is getting ready to take us and flee. The officers hurry on over to the residence and they catch Karina just as she's stepping out of her front door and they arrest her on the spot. And then as mentioned earlier on in the video, she's taken in for questioning. The officers have a search warrant, a cadaver dog. They search the home and that's when they uncover that Ku had been buried underneath the shed that Karina had erected. After the officers found Ku's body at the excavation site, they would inform Delilah and Mylin, and their reactions are just honestly heartbreaking. The children were devastated to learn about Ku's death, and they were even more devastated to know that their own mother had done this to their father. After her arrest, Karina would be held in custody with a $2 million bail and she would later plead guilty to murder and coup. She would be charged with murder with intent and not premeditated murder. And on March 29th of 2022, she would be sentenced to 22 years in prison. In my opinion, a 22 year sentence is definitely not long enough. Not after everything she's done. It's honestly horrifying to know that she's going to be out of prison in 22 years. She's going to be a free woman after everything she's done to her children and her partners. Her actions will probably traumatize her children and her ex-partner for the rest of their lives. So I honestly can't believe she's only getting 22 years. I do hope that they can all find peace and are able to move on from everything that happened. But yeah, I mean, it's just really sad to hear that they went through all of that. And on top of that, they had a mother who had murdered their stepfather, who they loved very much. This was a really sad case to cover, and I really do hope that they're all doing really well now and that, you know, they've been able to move on with their lives. I know that there's a lot of things that have happened, though, probably really difficult to move on from, but I do hope that they are able to live a happy, healthy, loving life now and that, yeah, they're doing well in general. But this does bring this case to a close. As always, thank you so much for watching my videos and for supporting me on my channel. I look forward to any comments or feedback you might have for this video. And yes, thank you so much for tuning in. I do hope to see you in my next video. And if you have any case recommendations, 
please don't hesitate to drop them in the comments or to send them to my email, truecrimebyjt at gmail.com. Thank you so much, guys, and have a wonderful week ahead. Bye.